All right, everybody, welcome. My name is Jason Haddix, and this is Executive Offense. This is a exclusive podcast this week. We're doing audio only with a friend of mine, Brute. And uh, Brute and I met at DEF CON several years ago. And Brute is known, Rodolfo is known throughout the industry as kind of a master in a couple areas, and we'll get to those. But I definitely wanted to bring him on the show at some point. And I hadn't really heard a lot of people um, really, Brute, talk to you, you know, kind of uh, about your history and how you got into this stuff. So why don't you give the newsletter and the YouTube like a little bit of your backstory and where you're from and, and how you got into all this crazy offensive security stuff? Hello, Jason, my friend. How are you? I'm doing uh, so well. I'll... Okay, good. Thanks for having me. Uh, I hope everyone listened to this now are uh, okay and safe. So I will start by by uh, telling telling how I, I I got into hacking first uh, before diving to web hacking and cross site scripting. Uh, I've gotten into hacking uh, first by just admiring, you know, just just seeing uh, others other hackers work. Uh, in the internet, when the the the, the internet uh, started here in Brazil, around 1997, when I first got into the the, the internet and web, but uh, I had a, a technology background, programming background, with Pascal at the time, the language program and assembly, and other some old stuff like COBOL, uh, but. Uh, the, the greatest thing is that it's always able to understand how machines work, you know, and programming language. And, and I, I did want, uh, I did dream to become a hacker, but I couldn't do it until 2010, when I was working at a power company here and it started to, decided to pursue my passion, you know, to, to learn all the, the, the hacking stuff, secrets, etc. Um, in, 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 in a very short time, I was able to find vulnerabilities there and report to them and started to climb the, the, the position ladder there. But uh, I had to, to, to leave the, the company behind. I have to, to, to quit because the, the compensation uh, was not enough for the kind of job I was doing, you know. So yeah. when when I saw myself uh, alone and with no job, uh, I, I didn't want to, to keep doing that stuff, but uh, the job market wouldn't accept me that way. I, I had no degree at the time, you know, uh, no mm -hmm. degree, no certs. I think uh, a lot of guys who, who might be listening to, to this now, it's in the same position that I was. So what what I did decide to do, uh, I I went to Twitter. At that time, it was named Twitter <laughs> yet. <laughs> now it's X. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows next year? Yep. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and because it's a micro blog uh, and it had just 140 charts, right uh, at the time uh, it's like an sms uh i thought that it could be easier to share some thoughts about uh, what i have learned in a synthetic form you know with less words with straight to the point or links or something like that and then i started i started with zero followers no one ever had uh, heard about me uh, it might, but I decided 10, 10 days later after starting my account at Brute Logic. Now, in fact, it was Logica Bruta, uh, which is Brute Logic in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was sharing in uh, sharing my posts in, in Portuguese, but I decided to go to go wide, you know. So uh, I decided to 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 start in English to tweet in English. And to learn about how the social media, social media work, uh, because I had no social media network at the time, no profile in any other social media, uh, and decided to to start like that, and started to to share what I, what I, I knew at the time, but also learning a lot, reading a lot, practicing a lot. 
and uh, that was in 2012, September 2012. Uh, but in 2015, in the very beginning of that year, I I was started to look to cross site script stuff and understand almost nothing. You know, you probably had that time in your life too with cross site script or any other vulnerability. Uh, because uh, 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 we take that for granted, right? Because we already know that. But uh, there was some time, like any other beginner, noob or there, that you look at that stuff and you feel like a, an idiot. You know, you feel <laughs> yes, you feel like a dumb, a dumb person because you can't understand it. It, it seems so complicated. But in fact, it's, it's a little complicated, right? Okay, uh, especially JavaScript, which is a crazy language. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, I, I, I could not stand anymore with that. I could not allow myself to look at uh, those crazy bypasses and stuff and, and call myself a hack involved in the understanding that. So I decided to go deep on that. Uh, at the time, there was not so much, not so many uh, resources available for beginners. There was pretty much advanced stuff from, from the elite guys in the field that you know until today. But uh, there was no simple, simple stuff. And at that time, I found a website, which now today is called uh, Open Bank Bounding. At that time, it was uh, it was named Access Posed, and it was a full disclosure website, like Sony Age, uh, you know, for, for defacement. Yeah. Uh, it was a site to, to publish any process script in any, anywhere in the web. Mm -hmm. And they had some rankings. Uh, in one rank, it, it's the overall one for any website, submissions about any website, and one for VIP websites. They considered uh, VIP uh, uh, sites with a page rank, Google page rank, from seven or above. So, uh, and the first guy, the, the, the champion of the, the, the rank of the competition had uh, around 100 and a, a little bit more submissions. And, and I thought that it was a, a really low number. I thought, I think I can try to get in the top 10 easily. And, and, I, and I just started to look for cross site script in the wire. Uh, as, as you might know in your audience too, most of the cross-site script out there uh, are very easy and straightforward. It's a simple script knowledge one or SVG on load knowledge one. But uh, in that process, you, you kind of face several challenges, uh, different types of injections, and especially filter bypass. Uh, at that time, I was able to to get a lot of cross-site scripting reporting there. I also reported one or another for a bug bot program in which I had some issues that I started online about that. I don't get into that here because it's a linked one, but it was in group one. Mm -hmm. It's a cross-site script affecting all those those 30 plus websites in several languages and countries they had. It was the same root cause, but uh, the impact was big. Uh, and Amazon, LinkedIn, and, and all, all several major players today, Oracle, but at that time, they, they didn't pay uh, a bounty for that. And someday, I found a way to bypass the Sukuri security firewalls, web, web application firewall. And because they, don't, they didn't have a bug about program uh, uh, for that, uh, I guess it was just for the websites, not for the firewall itself. Mm -hmm. I decided to publish in Twitter uh, and show and show them my audience, which was, at that time was a, a pretty decent one. I was already recognized, acknowledged in the field for for my contribution, and I decided to show the technique, the the code payload that I used to bypass. Uh, the guy at the security, the, the owner, the founder, Daniel, was able to see it and come to talk to me about that. Uh, he decided to give me a bounty, even if it was not in the in the, the scope of the program. Oh, that's and cool. He yeah, cool, very cool. And, and he decided to call me for a test 
uh, a test, uh, 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 where I could show my, my skills in bypassing it. That's, that's so, amazing. That's amazing. Well, yeah, yeah, it, it was. Uh, later, <laughs> there, there's a, a funny detail in the story. I will, I will tell you guys later. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I made a deal with him to build a, a test page, a test a test website. Then he could put it, he could place it to, uh, behind the walls, right? And I would start to 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 bypass it and show him all the the things I could find. So uh, we, we, uh, because it could be a huge number of vulnerabilities, and because uh, he would pay for every one of them, we decided to make it, uh, some scale. You know, like one to to five, I would pay you that amount for five to 10, that other amount. Because if it was a, a, a fixed value for each one, it would be a lot of money. Because I found very, very money, many, many vulnerabilities, many, many bypass. Uh, so after the, this work, he told me that he invited me to to work with the, the, the company uh, to, to do exactly what I was doing. To, to bypass, to break the firewall. And report them, of course, internally to my uh, to my manager, and then he could fix it. Not just with cross-site scripting, but SQL uh, injection and uh, other vulnerabilities as well. Uh, and, and later, Daniel, uh, the, the CEO of Sucuri, told me that he did that, that same test, with me and another guy from India. Oh. Uh, uh, his name is Ashar Javed, I guess. <laughs> Ashar is a good friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's a, a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, in a very scary one. He, uh, if I remember well, he was top top one hundred huh, in in Microsoft so many years ago. And yeah. I don't know if he's still there. He still is. He he still is right. So so. <laughs> It, 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 he's not not like anybody, right? He's a he's a he's a kind of star in the in our community. So uh, you know what's really funny uh, about that, brute, is that when I think of when I think of the some of the best people I know at, at the specific bug we've been talking a lot about cross site scripting, the two people that come to my mind first are you and Ashar. And Ashar. <laughs> um, oh, cool. When I when I think about cool. this bug. <laughs> It, it's it's nice. Uh, I, I think I think because there are so many good guys in this field. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I I can't even tell if there's one better than another because it's so different. So uh, our styles are so different. Yeah. But uh, I I I know there are very good guys uh, at my level, even better, depending on how you your criteria about it. But uh, Asha. Uh, and I, uh, maybe because of our countries, he's from India and I'm from Brazil, mm -hmm. we have something different, you know, from the European guys, for example, or the American guys, because we had this, this, uh, how can I say, this, uh, this light way, you know, uh, uh, we, we are, we, we try to be funny, we try to be, to be crazy, different, uh, uh, technical, but uh, almost artistic, you know. Uh, especially Asha, I was very inspired by by him in the beginning. So in that uh, in that test to to uh, the the to join the company, uh, Daniel told me later that he he did the same task for Asha, uh, and he also get got great results, uh, but he did like me more. Uh, my work or my person, I, I don't know, but he he chosen me. Uh, and then I started there. Uh, I, I I was there for two years and a half. And it was that time when I was to Defcon because the company sent me there, mm -hmm. and, and I really started to to become uh, an authority in that cross site script stuff and uh, WAF bypass stuff uh, which i'm i'm still I, I think i still have this position today you know as a reference in the field okay. uh okay yeah and in the, in the in the end of the the my my time in the company 
I've decided to come with a tool uh, for cross-site scripting, an automated tool. I was inspired, you, you know, by, by a tool named Havage. Do you know? Yeah, Havage, the SQL uh, injection tool. Yeah, yeah. I, I found it so, 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 how can I say, so naive, but at the same time, so cool. Mm -hmm. So, so useful uh, uh, that I, I decided to make a tool uh, inspired by, by it, but for cross-site scripting. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to automate everything. Uh, the guy, the user would need just to click a button and it would be all done for, for him or her. And uh, I decided to do that with cross-site scripting. In, in the, the very month that it was launched, it was a huge success. The community supported me a lot. And then the upcoming months and years, uh, things just got better. I just improved the tool a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, this year will be the, the greatest year ever because I'm coming a lot of, of things to it. And I and I even hope to, to launch another another tool. Uh, this is a first-hand announcement, uh, kind of first-hand announcement because oh. I, I think I, I did do... Uh, that in, some days ago, uh, I, I'm planning to release a tool like Nox, but for SQL injection, oh, not wow. SQL injection, database injection, because it's be for both SQL and NoSQL and mm -hmm. other tricks involving database, which is not related to 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 SQL at all or injections at all. But uh, it would be a tool for for hunters, uh, and probably uh, uh, not like SQL map because SQL map it's a man. Any map and SQL map are one of the best tool hacking tools ever, mm -hmm. ever. Uh, any map I, I can't even mention it because it it, it will be uh, it will be a sin to not include it in any top list of of, of uh, hacking tools. But SQL map, I love SQL map. I think it's a, a genius tool. But uh, uh, that's why I. I postponed this a lot. I didn't want to compete with it. I didn't want to be an alternative to it, but I have some good ideas that I can put into my tool that makes it a little bit different from the SQL map. And so that's why now I got the courage to, to come with it this year. And just to 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 finish my, my, my initial statements here, it, uh, the, the shit sheet, my book, e book that I, I've been releasing uh, from the last two years. Uh, I just came with another edition. Uh, I just, uh, just tried to, to come with a more focused one in, in all those, those payloads that can be useful in situations. I can't, I, I can't, I can't really tell that it's useful, that it was useful for me and I can't, I can't say that. And less less code, you know, less alternatives, because there's a lot of code, a lot of alternatives. And I think a lot of things in cross-site scripts, uh, especially, uh, makes people a little confused about it. Especially when I was a beginner on it, I was very confused about several things. And it's still a very confused subject. It's not easy. No, but I think the all. less in this case, uh, the less in that case is more. So I'm trying to to bring it less. But at the same time, Nox, which is a complex tool, uh, it's automating uh, a lot of that process. So people do not have to worry about it. It's like a SQL map, you know, you don't need to know how to, to exploit a SQL, a blind SQL injection manually because it's so painful. It's very hard. I don't know if you if you ever had to do it someday in your life manually, but I had to. It was it was horrible. It was yes. very hard. Yeah. Uh, so SQL map, you don't need to know how to work. Just, just trust, you know. So uh, uh, I got to this point too. Uh, I I I want people to know what I'm doing in the in, in the background, and trust me because I know what I'm doing. I've been doing that for almost a decade already. And that's why it's been a huge success, especially lately. That's awesome. I have so many questions for you. I've been writing them down okay. on, on post-its here. I, so, um, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry if I, I stand in myself too much. No, 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 no. It was great. It's great. Uh, I mean, 
I just uh, I love to take notes and kind of dissect kind of what what people come on and talk about. So I'm going to rewind awesome. a little bit from uh, what you first said. And so, like, you know, before Dude. the before the show, um, you know, I looked at uh, your LinkedIn and, and I noticed that you did have some IT experience before getting into security, before you made your transition. Do you think your yeah. IT experience helped you move into security quicker or to be more successful in security? Oh, man, this is a great, great question. I think no one ever have asked that to me. And the answer is yes, definitely. Uh, I don't know if it's, if it's possible. Probably it's possible to do without that. But for me, in my, my journey into technology and especially security, it was fundamental, uh, you know. Uh, I, 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 I used to think uh, 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 that uh, that a hacker is some is someone who is an expert in computers in general. You know, uh, it's a guy who knows computers. It's not just a, just a guy that can that can find a tool or then copy and paste some uh, payload or you know uh, follow some tutorial steps. I think the hack is some it's someone who really understands what's happened there, you know. Uh, so to understand that, we need to know a lot of technologies, a lot of programs, pro protocols, and all this stuff. You know? Yep. Yep. I think I think one of the things I love about hacking, um, and 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 that question in particular, when I ask people, they pretty much all answer it the same way that um, yes, IT was tremendously useful i think that you know it's really it's really hard these days because i think some new new people getting into security and bug bounty especially since bug bounty has offered this way to just learn the skill through videos online or courses yeah. and then go directly to start hacking and then try to find a job that is a yeah. path that a lot of people are are approaching it like nowadays and are actually skipping yeah. the whole working in IT yeah. part. So it's it's really interesting to see, you know, where most of us, I started out in help desk, right? I, I was taking calls, fixing printers, fixing PCs, and then slowly, yeah, I, I imagine. You, know, I imagine. you know, stuff like that. So um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting. I'm glad, I'm glad that we, we have a little bit of the same path there. Um, yeah, uh, 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 I, I don't know if it's a, it's a, if it's a good question to, to ask here, but uh, at, at least I can say you say if you if you can if you if you wish. Uh, but I grew up in the eighties, you know. Uh, but I grew up in the eighties in Brazil, not in United States, because in United States it was much more advanced. But in, in, here in my country, in the eighties, I had I had some uh, I have little to no uh, contact with computers. Uh, just those computers that you could, could plug into TV, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it was basically a, a keyboard and and uh, uh, something with tape, you know, to tape from audio, uh, K7. And, and it was the memory of that computer. So we could do very basic things. I, I think you guys had Apple II at the time, right? Lisa, yeah. think, things like, like that. But... Uh, I've spent most of my of my childhood uh, with video games, so oh, video yeah. games also helped me to to think about technology in in those ways. You know, for example, there's a a, a, a super NES game that I love a lot, and I can see now that is Cyberpunk twenty seven seven. At the time, I was I was playing Shadowrun. You know, oh man, super, what a super great NES. one. What a great uh, yeah, one! I love it. I love it. <laughs> the, uh, you know, so so in 1999, when Matrix came came out, I didn't go. I didn't went to 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 the 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 oh uh, to the movie to to watch the movie because uh, because of the title, the Matrix. I, I already knew what it was about. I, I thought I, I knew right. So ah oh this is from from cyberpunk stuff this is from uh, uh, Gibson uh, uh, Neuromass uh, 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 that kind of stuff uh, but uh, I was really in love with the future of the high technology you know 
uh, it, uh, it so it, it it was a matter of time uh, until I, I could uh, really dive into into that. I I think you you also grew up uh, in the in between machines and, and computer stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, I was I was a child of the '90s. Uh, I mean, I was born in the '80s, and most of my computer usage came in early to later, um, or early to mid '90s. And so, you know, my the first computer I think I ever touched was uh, an Apple II, and I remember being amazed because my school got one, and it had um, Oregon Trail on it. And the Oregon Trail game, you know, was black and white. And the coolest thing I had ever seen was the part in Oregon Trail where you get to shoot the bison. They run across the screen and you get to shoot the bison. And I was like, this is this is crazy. Like, this is this is crazy stuff. And I think so many of us mm -hmm. have our roots in video games. I think that yeah. it inspires uh, it inspires us to dig into technology um, exactly. You know, we, we have big dreams when we're kids of understanding how everything works and creating things. And um, I think video games definitely did that for me, for sure. Yeah, um, maybe, maybe, maybe we don't even uh, choose technology, right? Techno technology <laughs> chooses us. Yeah, that, that's true. That because, is true. Yeah. Because we, we all kind of the same in, on that uh, aspect of no. our lives. No. All right. So my, my next question for you is, is when you transitioned... Um, you know, from IT into security, you know, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned what is XSS.is now, but before, or no, it is, it is now, uh, what is the site now? It's, um, it is, um, uh, open, openbugbounty.com and it used yeah. to be XSS.is. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh -huh. XSS posed, yeah. And so for anybody wow. who's listening, who's never seen the site, um, you know, it, it, back then it was just like a page with yeah. uh, with a leaderboard of people who could do cross-site scripting attacks and, you know, based yeah. on how many days you got points and stuff. It was kind of the first, you know, leaderboard that, you know, Bug Bounty kind of like vibe that um, ever existed. I, I would say that was the first one I saw with like a leaderboard in competition. There was there was no uh, ranking, uh, hacker one ranking at that time. Yeah, yeah, there was no ranking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... My question is around that time frame in your life is, do you think that focusing on the one bug because that forum was very specific in cross it was very specific in ranking cross site scripting? Do you think focusing on the one type of bug early on helped you um, in a way to learn? Because I know a lot of people right now, one of the questions I get a lot from newer hackers or newer offensive security people is they ask, do I learn everything? Do I do a class that goes through every vulnerability or should I just learn one thing really well and then move on to the next thing once I know that one thing really well? What is your opinion on that? That's a, another awesome question, Jason. Uh, uh, it's, it's unbelievable because I deal with many questions daily, you must uh, imagine, from usually from people who are starting, but also from other guys as well. But especially because I provide customer service for my tool. So, but uh, even on interviews and, and things like that, uh, I don't get that type of specific uh, question, which is important because I will highlight a point here. Uh, what what happened to me at that time? As I said, I decided to to go to XSS because I didn't understand it. So that was the, uh, a driver for me, okay? But I, I, I could just let it go, you know, uh, after I retired, in, in quotes, mm -hmm. uh, from from XS Posit, because I was top everything there. I was top top one in general, top one VIP, top uh, top uh, page rank one, which was Baidu at that time. It was number four. Uh, at the at the Google page rank, and that's amazing. Number four, not not the page rank four, but uh, it was the four most visited website on planet at, at that time. That's crazy. Uh, so, uh, but by do it's the Chinese Google, right? I think everyone knows. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it was a cool, a cool, a cool one, a cool cross app script one. But uh, I could just let it go there, you know. So, okay, I, I had a 
I had all that, that, that I, 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 I worked for, I could get back to what I was doing before. The problem is that I saw an opportunity on that field. Uh, I saw that really there was no place showing the, the things that I was able to use to find those cross-site scripting and, and those techniques, you know, which, which is kind of basic if you think about it, because other guys come with much more complicated things. But uh, they were basics, but they were important. You know, so uh, that motivated me to even create a, a blog. Uh, that's why I have a blog until today because I decided to to get more deep into into those. But uh, now coming back to the quest because I deviated a little. Uh, before that, I was studying and dedicating myself to memory exploitation. You know. Uh, Indeed, uh, I didn't finish the book that I that I bought at that time, uh, which is uh, I forgot the name. Uh, it's from the Reverend Bill Burden, uh, "Dark Exploitation: The Dark Cards of the System." Excuse, me. Yeah, I forgot the, the 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 title name, but I will remember. What I say so. I was really in love with memory exploitation because if you think about it, the the Craziest and most complicated thing to to do, and the most valuable also one uh, because you can sell exploits like this for 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 another countries to to nation state hackers you know mm -hmm. agents. So uh, I was really trying to 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 come with some new technique or new exploitation in Windows or any other operation system or. or a widely used program to try to sell to Zerogen. Zerogen is a company uh, or something like that, or other companies like that, that buy those exploits for, for 100K or more, even a million uh, for an, an Apple, I guess, uh, an iPhone exploit. So uh, it's because it's very challenging, uh, very, very challenging for the mind to, to deal with those. But as I said, I, I could... That thing was irritating me. It was annoying me because I saw a thing that I couldn't understand. And I did try to, to, to pause a little on my stuff and do that. But I couldn't come back because I saw that it was uh, the field was in need of someone like me, I guess. But right. I still I still learn about other things. When I started to, to work with Sukuri, uh, I was diving to WordPress, SQL injection. Uh, a little bit of SSRF, uh, logical bugs, uh, and other stuff. But mm -hmm. I really recommend, I really suggest uh, people to learn at least a little bit about everything. You know, you have to know what this is all about. And then you choose, you pick up uh, something you you like more, you, you think that there's something that you can contribute to in that specific subject and go uh, for them. For, because uh, uh, you can't really be a hacker without at least knowing the basics of everything. That is that is awesome. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of us are generalists, right? And then slowly over a career, we collect, you know, some knowledge. So I'd, I'd like to hear, you know, kind of people's perspective on that one. So... So one of the things with um you know with the websites where you did competition and I know that was it was really important to my development was um was competition right and so you know I had done pen testing for a long time when I was at HP but there was no real way to gauge how good you were compared to other people in your field and not that it's you know necessary to gauge but I just wanted to feel like I had some sort of mastery or knowledge on the topic and I think I got lucky because bug bounties came around, you know, at that time, and I got to use the leaderboard to compete with some people. And then um, that pushed me to become much better. Do you think that competition, you know, whether it's being part of a pen test team, or being part of a website like you did, or being part of a bug bounty leaderboard, do you think that's important to the development of hackers these days? Uh, that's a good question, too. I, I have never thought about it. But uh, we can 
we can just simply uh, take the that concept of competition from from life itself, right? From or from economy like capitalism uh, and market in general. Uh, the competition in general raises the bar, right? Uh, force people to be better and the the field to be more uh, wired with more knowledge. But at the same time, I think uh, from a personal perspective, uh, it it mess a lot with people. With people, you know. Uh, I was talking with Kenan, for example. I don't know if you, if you know him, the Kenan, which was one of the top fifty at Hacker One. He was oh, yes, Kenan. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, from Turkey. Now uh, he he. He was one of the top hackers at Hacker One and mostly cross site script. And he was one of my first students, you know. So uh, he, he became much better than me at hunting, you know, uh, not really in the, the subject itself, but he's very skilled. He was he had a, a background from 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 software and other stuff. So uh uh I've lost myself here. I don't know why why I cite him. But uh, uh, yes, competition. Uh, but uh, he was talking to me that uh, sometimes it's annoying uh, uh, because of the situation he is now. He 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 dropped it out from some programs or from pl platform for some reason, and and he's he's not uh, gaining so much money that he was doing a uh, little time before. Uh, so uh, when he sees. People sharing the acknowledgement, uh, they they post about oh, I've I've got 10k, I've got 50k uh, with with this or that. Uh, he's he can kind of get annoyed by it, and I think uh, so many people out there all get annoyed or envy or jealous, right? Uh, or, uh, or 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 get motivated by it. So that competition triggers a lot of different feelings on different people, you know, uh, for the interest itself, for the corpse of knowledge itself, uh, the board of knowledge itself, it's, uh, it's good, it's, it's progress. But from a personal perspective, uh, it's kind of overwhelming, you know, for a lot of people there, uh, me included. You can be sure of that because uh, it's very hard for me also to keep the pace with all the, the new discoveries and techniques, especially because of the bug bump. I I totally agree. I think that um, I think that you know some level of of uh, competition is really important, and I think early on in people's origin story times, I'd like to call it. I think that competition can be good for you. But prolonged over a long period of time, it can also hurt your self-esteem. It can promote the wrong things. You know, in the end of the day, we're actually here to secure things rather than just break them all the time, too. So it can create an unhealthy dialogue around security in general. Um, and then, you know, you were talking about like, you know, Keenan and the and the money thing. And um, yeah, I I, you know, it's not one of my favorite things. I like to see people succeed. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's really, it's really interesting. Everybody seems to have a, a different take on it. And, um, it's, it's very interesting that, uh, that you brought up the other side because, um, you know, sometimes it can get a little toxic where, you know, um, you yeah. see, you see these things on Twitter or you see them, you know, on the leaderboards and just people succeeding and they're having a higher level of success than you. And that doesn't yeah. mean that you have failed at all. It meant that yeah. you know a lot of times yeah. it just meant that they were lucky, or you know, or they were in the right yeah. place at the right time. Yeah, or, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. could be first anything. First to come, first to serve. Yeah, serve. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, but but uh, I think it's important, Jason, to to stress that this is not exclusive to to our field. It's society in general. It's our times in general. It's uh, everything very competitive now. Uh, and we are having a hard time to keep up the pace with that, you know. So uh, uh, we also had mental issues and, and mental stuff. Uh, but uh, as I said, for the industry in general, it's good. Uh, it's just, uh, just overwhelming for the most of us. But I think we can 
we can overcome that together. Okay. So, um, Rodolfo, we're at, you know, almost the hour. And um, what I would love to do is I have, I have, a, I have actually several more questions for you. Um, so we, would we, you we can do a part two someday? That's great. That's what I was going to ask. So I would say that we can break it now for our listeners and for um, eventually this will end up on YouTube. And, you know, when we come back for part two, um, you know, I definitely want to talk to you about the the different kind of approaches you took with Knox as a tool, your book. I have so many questions for you around edge cases and cross-site scripting. And, and if you feel like newer frameworks are making um, a dent in how much cross-site scripting is on the internet these days, but we can tackle those more technical questions in part two. How's that sound? You, you you have no idea, my friend, how for how many years I was expecting for questions like this, you know. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, good. because yeah, because it's, I I I think uh, when I just say it, uh, uh, less people uh, get to know it. But when people are interested in, in asking those, uh, uh, that 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 activity uh, sparks more 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 good stuff, you know. Uh, uh, and for example, your audience, you have a huge audience uh, from for, uh, for all types of professionals, right? So uh, people, people will also uh, have some questions on the answers that I will give to your questions. So that will, will be very nice. Uh, most of the people, I guess, think that all SQL injections are the same or all cross script are the same. Uh, that's not true for any vulnerability out there. No, any, it's not. Any. <laughs> it's definitely not. All right, so we're going to wrap it up today um, for um, Rodolfo here, and um, I'm going to put links to Knox in the book and your bio and your website um, in the newsletter so people know how to contact you and your Twitter or X, whatever people are calling these days. And, um, and then maybe next week you and I can catch up for a round two on um, on a little bit more technical part of, yeah. uh, of process scripting. Yeah, stay tuned, guys. All righty, come back. <laughs> Great. All right.